In 2010, the W212 Mercedes-Benz E300 Avantgarde would have set you back nearly 460,000 ringgit to own one. It was the pinnacle of the E-Class experience, with loads of equipment thrown in, making it the ultimate in mid-size sedan luxury. Fast forward a decade later, and the W213 E350 AMG line is a tech fest with more efficient powertrain while growing in every dimension. Yet, the latter is nearly 100,000 ringgit cheaper. Does the top of the range E-Class limousine still retain its trademark luxury opulence after a decade? Or has it been sacrificed for cost and packaging reasons? Let's find out in this episode of Root Hunters. Before we dive in, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to stay up to date with our latest content. The W212 E300 is classic Mercedes-Benz on the exterior, when every variant had a signature look of its own. It's the last E-Class with the split headlamps which started off with the W210 and has an aggressive front end with an almost robotic look. This particular unit comes with the optional sports tuned suspension, an option for the avant-garde line which sports reinforced anti-roll bars, 17-inch rims, and a lower ride height by 15 millimeters. This E-Class comes with LED DRLs up front as standard and the signature three-point star hood ornament. It really makes you feel aristocratic driving down the road with the three-point star leading the way. While the older car looks unlike the rest of the Mercedes-Benz range, the current W213 looks very much like its family members. It's got a signature look which we first saw in the W222 S-Class with the same wide grille, those rare biased swooping proportions and the wide elongated headlamps with inbuilt DRLs and slim LED tail lamps. For the E350 here in AMG line trim, the three-point star sits inside the front grille. There are big brake calipers that sits inside the 19-inch AMG design rims. Unique to the AMG line cars are the night package trim which blacks out the front and rear aprons for a more aggressive look. All in all, both cars are unmistakably Mercedes-Benz, but the W213 is a radical departure from the E-Class look when compared to its predecessor. Is the new car a step in the right direction? Share your thoughts in the comment sections. On the inside is where things are wildly different yet strangely familiar. The W212 is the transitional car before Mercedes-Benz went fully digital. The command interface debuted for the E-Class in the W212. So does the column gear shifter and the dash designed to house the command screen. It received an analog display with digital screens in the middle of the speedometer, displaying various information like the current track, gear position and engine status. Aside from the electronics, the interior is a lovely mix of leather and wood, with a panoramic roof extending over the entire cabin. The E300 also has the most comfortable headrests this side of a Rolls Royce. This particular car even came with a rare entertainment package. The E350 AMG line is a tech fest in comparison to the old school charms of its predecessor. The dash is dominated by the MBUX display which spans 12.3 inches for the instrument display and 10.25 inches for the media display. Coupled that with our test cars Tan napper leather and contrasting metal weave trim is the perfect blend of classic design cues with technology. The latest iteration of the command system called Command Online now comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and connectivity via the Mercedes-Benz app. You can navigate the system via a rotating dial, the touchpad where you can write on or even the haptic sensors on the steering wheel. The haptic sensors work like the touchpad on a smartphone, with the right one controlling the car's instrument display and the left one controlling the media display. Despite missing the rare entertainment package, the styling, material and the overall feel of the cabin is classic Mercedes-Benz. From the signature starter button, door-mounted seat adjustment, to the column-mounted gear shifter and the analog clock on the dash reminds you that you're still in the E-Class. The W213 has a significantly bigger cabin thanks to bigger dimensions in all directions. It's still very much the leader of the pack here. Under the hood, things get even more different. 
In the old car, there's a 3-litre naturally aspirated V6 that puts out 220 horsepower and 300 Newton meters of torque via a 7-speed automatic gearbox. With no start-stop system, hybrid assistance or even direct injection, the best you can get out of this old-school engine is a 0 to 100 kph time of 7.4 seconds and a consumption figure of 11 litres per 100 kilometres at best. This configuration comes alive on the open roads and highways though. In the new car, the E350 badge now means that there's a 2-litre turbocharged inline 4 engine with direct injection and a 48-volt mild hybrid assistance which provides a combined output of 299 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. There's nearly a hundred more in both output figures from its predecessor. With more power, torque and a 9-speed gearbox, the new car is good to hit 100 kph in 5.9 seconds and still return a consumption figure of 8.5 litres per 100 kilometres. On the road is where both Mercedes-Benzes differ the most. In the W212 E300, the ride is very much tuned to comfort and refinement. It's not a road-prone mess and it can carry very high speeds through the corners safely. Yet, it's solidly planted on the road, even during heavy downpours. That makes this a very safe and capable high-speed cruiser. The new car, thanks to its dynamic body control suspension system, allows the car to perform on the road with both luxurious comfort and sporty handling response. One minute, you can ride over crater-sized potholes and the next minute, you can cut corners like a sports coupe. Despite being bigger and just a tiny bit heavier than its predecessor, the W213 has an agility the old car does not have. In sports and sports plus modes, it feels spirited and agile, eager to jump. But when you dial everything back, it becomes a gentle cruiser once more. This chassis flexibility makes it an ideal car for our roads. The new E350 comes with a 4-year warranty with the option of an extended warranty program for 2 more years. The extended warranty program covers a total of 9 items which include engine, air conditioning system, gearbox and suspension system. That's comforting because a set of dampers at the front will set you back 15,000 ringgit. The car does not come with any form of servicing package and each service will set you back an estimated 1,450 ringgit for every 12,000 kilometers. Unlike the previous Mercedes-Benz hybrids, the E350's 48 volt battery system only costs 13,000 ringgit to replace and it's covered under the 4-year warranty. The regular battery of the car is priced at 3,000 ringgit and will last for 2 years. This car runs on run-flat tyres which will last about 35,000 kilometres and would set you back about 8,000 ringgit for a set of 4 new ones. So in 2 years or 24,000 kilometres, you would have ended up spending almost 40,865 ringgit to run the E350 AMG line. That works out to be about 1,700 ringgit per month excluding financing and fuel. The E350 sure does live up to its E-Class flagship role and it realises luxury through technology. It does however retain the classic charms of the E-Class limousines of the past and the DNA crossover is apparent. Also thanks to technology, the E350 AMG line has newfound sportiness in its drive experience without having to compromise comfort. All in a package that costs lesser than its predecessor, for 399,888 ringgit, this is a car you can opt for if you're looking for a Mercedes Benz that brings you luxury with a dash of sportiness. What are your thoughts on the E350? Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.